Joining me and Dave McCann right now is the man who played a significant role in that game, got a critical fourth down conversion with a catch late in the game, Dennis Pitta. We've got plenty of time for you today, my friend. Great to have you back on the show. How are things? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. You know, we, uh, I think we're feeling some form of optimism, <laughs> or at least trying to trick ourselves into it, that BYU is yeah. going to show up on senior day and, and do something that would totally flip the script on the season. I don't, Dennis, how, what, just to sum up your general expectations, what type of BYU team do you expect to show up tomorrow? Well, let me first say how refreshing it is to not have Jerem on the show. I think uh, there's, there's an all new kind of energy and vibe that I really appreciate. And, um, I don't know if it's Dave or if it's you, Spencer. You guys look terrific, and uh, it's just a better day overall than I thought I was going to have. I was going to have to look at Jerem's ugly quaff the whole time. And, uh, Point taken. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> uh, hey, we got the right tone set, right? Okay. Okay. So yeah. All good things. Okay. So then, Absolutely. yeah. Now, as you sum up your your expectations, not just – I mean, we'll get to the specifics of the game in a moment. But just how do you expect BYU to show up emotionally and physically for tomorrow's game? <laughs> so we, we do have to talk about Oklahoma. Is that correct? Yes. I thought we were just kind of – okay. Um <laughs> I think it's difficult as a BYU fan to have any expectations going into this game. <laughs> um, and listen, the, the best predictor of future performance is the past, right? And unfortunately, BYU has not done well in the past, not specifically against Oklahoma, but just in the past few games of the season. And um, it, it's been difficult to watch. I mean, we don't need to sugarcoat it. I know you guys haven't sugarcoated on, on this program. Um, it's been very difficult to watch. I think it's been difficult for everybody, for fans, for players, for coaches. Um, there's just not a lot of answers for, for what's going on, and, and it's, it's been frustrating on a lot of different fronts. Um, listen, Oklahoma is a very good football team, and uh, they're a better football team, in my opinion, than the last couple of football teams we just played and, and got beat pretty handily by. And so um, to say that I have high expectations for this game or that we're – we can all of a sudden pull this one off, I think is a little bit unrealistic. Um, clearly, I don't have blue goggles on, but, uh, you know, looking at this from just kind of a football perspective, you know, it, it, it's going to be a very difficult game. I mean, this is a, a top five offense as far as total yards go, and, uh, you know, they're averaging over 500 yards a game. I mean, it, it's going to be a juggernaut, to be completely honest. And I think the most disappointing thing over the last couple games for me to watch is – just the lack of, of energy and, and the lack of, of will out on the field. And you mentioned it, you know, how do you summon kind of the, the, the energy and, and all that to go out and, and beat Oklahoma? That's what they have to find because you watch these games and, you know, from the very start, um, you know, there's, there's mistakes that shouldn't happen. There's turnovers that are unforced. There's all kinds of things that you're just like, what, what is going on right now? And, uh, there's a lot of concerning things in regards to the football team, but um, I, I would love to see a competitive game. I would love to see a team in BYU play for four quarters and compete for four quarters. And and I don't expect them to win this game. I don't. If you expect them to win this game, you probably haven't watched much football this season. But um, I, I think I expect them to compete, and especially on senior night. Hopefully, that emotion is there. And they can show up and they can be a team that's going to play for 60 minutes. Is that how long they play for? I know the NFL <laughs> plays for 60 I'm going to assume yes, college yes, plays yes. for 60 minutes. Indeed, games. 60 minutes. <laughs> Dennis, let's okay, go back. So, yeah, go ahead. Let's go back to 2009. Uh, you're playing Oklahoma. Um, you got Max Hall. You got, you got a lineup that's stacked with talent. But it's early in the season and you're a huge underdog to play them on a neutral field. Um, what was the mindset of the team going in? Was it that we're going to represent, we're going to be competitive, or did the team go in and go, we're going to knock Sam Bradford out for the season early in the first half and find a way to win this game late in the fourth quarter? Was that the magic part? Was the realistic part going, let's just go and, 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 and man up and be competitive with them? Yeah, I, I think it's always easier to play a really good football team in the first week or two of the season. 
And I think fortunately for us, we, we were able to do that. We got to play them in the very first game. Both teams aren't quite sure what they are yet. Um, I mean, listen, Oklahoma had an identity. They, they were a high-flying explosive offense led by Sam Bradford, who was the reigning Heisman winner. Um, we knew it was going to be a battle. We knew it was going to be a really tough game. But we also knew that our offense was good enough to, to put points up against the board on them. And we knew that we could make it interesting. I, I'm not sure that, you know, we sat around the night before being like, oh, we're going to beat these dudes. And we certainly didn't anticipate knocking Sam Bradford out of the game. Now, did that help? Absolutely, it helped. And probably a big reason why we did win that game uh, in the end. But listen, I, I think, you know, our, our team was good enough and, and we were confident enough that we could play with anybody. We could compete with anybody. And sometimes the ball bounces your way in games and you get, you know, get a little lucky and you get some help and you get some injuries that go your way. And, uh, you know, you're in at the end, you have a chance to win. And, and sometimes those things don't happen and you lose those games. So um, we weren't scared of Oklahoma. I, I know that. We, we, we didn't fear their defense. Um, I don't think, you know, our defense feared to play, you know, their explosive offense. Um, we anticipate it to be kind of a high scoring game and it, you know, never is what you anticipate 14, 13 is not a high scoring game by any means, but, um, listen, I, I, I we, we played great. Our defense played, you know, outstanding that yeah. game and things had to go right for us. And they did, I, I'm not going to sit, sit there and say, we would have beaten that team every time we played them. We, we maybe win, you know, three or four times out of 10. I mean, they just had such a talented roster, but. Uh, you know, we were good enough to hang in the game and compete. And, and that's all you can ask for. You, that's all you can ask for teams is just to go in and compete. And that's what you want to see this BYU team. And that's what's been lacking the last few games. I mean, you're getting blown out. Sure, oh, Iowa State's a better team. West Virginia's a better team. I mean, that's pretty clear. But go in and compete and make the game interesting and don't give up and, and you know, get blown out in the first half and have nothing to play for at that point. Compete. And that, that would be my message if I was the coach and in that locker room right now, you know, just go in and compete. We're not giving up. We're playing four quarters. Well stated by Dennis Pitta, who is on BYU Sports Nation on the eve of senior day for BYU. Early morning game, 10 a.m. kickoff. Dennis, you got to get breakfast early and get up and be ready to watch at 9 a.m. Pacific. So I, I don't know how they're playing that early, to be completely honest, because <laughs> one o'clock games are like way too early. I think we had a noon game in college one time. Um, and I feel like you're waking up at like seven in the morning. You got to get there a couple hours early. I can't even imagine a 10 a.m. start. Like you're going to be up at five in the morning. You better get to bed early. So for that, sure, that's, that's really my opinion. Oh, absolutely. No way, no way around it. It's just, it's just kind of a crazy scenario, but here we are of note. BYU was a 23 point underdog. When you beat Oklahoma back in 2009, the Cougars right now with a line of 24 and a half. So with all that considered and what has happened and been so frustrating for fans to watch with this BYU football team, and frankly for the coaches and players, they're frustrated too. If somehow BYU could string together what would be a mini miracle of a win, would that forgive the frustrations and the misfirings from the remainder of the season that has happened up to this point? Uh, would it forgive it? No, it wouldn't forgive it. Um, but listen, BYU is capable of beating Oklahoma. Let's not get like that mistaken. BYU has enough talent and enough ability to go out and beat Oklahoma. I, I mean, Oklahoma is a good football team. They're not a top 10 team in the country. I mean, they, you know, they lost to Oklahoma state a couple weeks ago and they've lost to Texas, which listen, both very good teams and Oklahoma is very good. But if BYU goes out and plays clean and doesn't turn the ball over and generates a couple turnovers, I mean, this is anybody's game, to be completely honest. And uh, I know I didn't lend, you know, fans much hope in, in my first kind of explanation, but it's not like there's no way BYU can ever win this game. It's just so mismatched. No, but the way BYU has been playing, the way things have been trending, the level of, you know, competing that you see on the field, it, it doesn't you know, give you a lot of confidence that they're going to show up and play the way that they would have to play to, to, to win this game. Um, but they're certainly capable. And so, yeah, I know the spread's huge. I mean, who cares about spreads, to be completely honest? But um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's doable. 
Although, you know, I, I think we'd all be shocked by it. And, and it doesn't forgive, you know, the last few games because I, I think it was really disappointing to see just the lack of effort, the lack, lack of competition um, against teams that you could have competed against in the entire game. Yeah, sure, you may not have won those games, but I think the style in which BYU lost is what's so frustrating for fans. And uh, that's something, you know, this th that will always be attached to this team, unfortunately. But, you know, fans are willing to forgive a lot and, and will forget a lot if you do go out and you, you know, play lights out and you compete and, and it looks completely different. And, and you grab a little momentum and you're able to play in a bowl game. I mean, things can certainly turn around for the narrative of this season. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think we're going to forget, you know, how it's played out to this point. A lot of truth in that, how forgiving fans can be. And to your point, I think all BYU fans, if I had some advice for you and you want to know how, how to beat Oklahoma, go watch Kansas beat Oklahoma and then go watch what Oklahoma State did against Oklahoma. And then maybe BYU can channel some of that. Dennis, it's great to talk to you, man. Uh, so thrilled that uh, you're part of this program, this fan base. And certainly when we have time for you on the show, always a good day for us. Yeah, thank you guys so much. And I, I let me correct an error. I did say Oklahoma lost to Texas, and I you're right. It was Kansas, not Texas. They beat Texas. So listen, Oklahoma's a good football team, and and it's going to be tough sled. But you know, if you're a man of faith, you know anything can happen. You can, you can move mountains. So. We need some of that Austin Collie magic. <laughs> yeah. When you're living right on and off the field, <laughs> you know, magic happens. So Thank you, hopefully Dennis. they're living right. Hopefully they've, uh, you know, repented of some sins and they're able to keep uh, <laughs> uh, things out there. Oh, great stuff. Uh, that's the appropriate way to end this interview, Dennis. Uh, never yeah, a dull moment, so. my friend. Hope all is well with you and your family. We'll talk to you again soon, brother. All right. Thank you, guys. You